Good morning, Keith Tebow, FRC Media. Thank you for joining us today. You know, we've talked a lot about how schools have been dealing through the pandemic, and uh, there's a lot going on around that in terms of students learning and um, how they're getting through. But we haven't spent a lot of time talking about the future, the future of education and how things are going to be improving in education. And I'm glad to spend a little bit of time on that today. We're going to be talking about an exciting project that is hoping to be undertaken by Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. They're looking to build a new high school on their site at uh, Stonehaven Road. And please be joined by the Assistant Superintendent and Principal, Andrew Rebello. Andrew, thank you for joining me again. How are you today? Doing great, thank Keith. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining us. So, you know, this has been uh, talked about in terms of a brand new uh, Diamond Regional uh, School. Uh, obviously, the uh, Durfee High School is being built on Ellsbury Street. And, you know, Diamond's been around for, for over 50 years. And, and talk about the process on, you know, deciding to move forward with uh, plans to, to build a new, uh, new Diamond Vogue. Sure. I think the necessity is, is as real as ever for a building that was built uh, in the 1960s for 900 students uh, to today where we have 1,450 students currently in our building, we're bursting at the seams. Every year we get 700 applications for 375 freshman seats. The need is now. Our production and the facts are real. Uh, I think that in 2017, we first submitted our report to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. It's a quasi-governmental service that uh, works with communities on uh, renovating, uh, having additions, or building new schools for communities. So they looked, the MSBA uh, looked at our school and, and our proposal, and they did a thorough search or, or their research of our building. And they uh, and they found severe overcrowding. They found a school that is, you know, doesn't have the code of compliance that's needed, outdated HVAC, uh, electric and plumbing systems. Um, and finally, looking at classroom and vocational spaces that are severely undersized. So when you take all of that into account, and, and, and I think if you look at the facts over the past few years of diamond winning awards, such as the best high school uh, in the name, one of the best high schools in the nation, uh, the production of, of, of the, getting our students ready to supply the next generation of workforce, um, you know, I, I think it's, there's an undoubted need. Uh, the administration has seen it. The district leadership has seen it. I think the community is recognizing uh, the, the need for a new diamond. So we've gone through the process. Um, for the past year, we spent about 2,500 hours with our contracted uh, project managers, our engineers, uh, a school building committee made up of community members, parents, students, uh, educators, to really be ready to submit a proposal to the state, um, that which we did today, uh, for a new building. So we're excited uh, we have uh, you know, a ton of resources available to the community. And we're going to start educating the community on what this really means, because I understand that there are new schools going up uh, in, in uh, towns and cities um, that supply our students. So you know, I, I completely understand uh, from a taxpayer point of view, uh, wanting all the knowledge, and we're ready to supply it. Um, at the end of the day, uh, this isn't an expense. It's going to be an investment. Uh, Diamond yeah. is... Diamond produces students that when you go to the, uh, get your car fixed, it's a diamond grad. When you go to the dentist, it's a diamond grad. Um, when you call your plumber, it's a diamond grad. This is really an investment. If you're invested in, in, in Somerset's Westport, Swansea, or Fall River, um, this, this uh, project is advantageous to you. A vote for a new diamond is truly a vote for a better Fall River, a better Somerset, a better Swansea, and a better Westport. Yeah, so let me ask you, throughout this process, uh, you said, you know, back uh, about three, four years ago now when the process was was undertaken in terms of exploring this, uh, was there any um, exploration in terms of expansion rather than the new building? And what was the decision to go into the direction of, uh, you know, building a brand new Diamond Regional Vogue? Absolutely, right. That was, we want to bring something knowing, you know, the needs of our communities in, in the schools and the taxpayer dollars that are already being spent we don't want to present something that it, it is going to cause a huge increase. We already know the, that the school is going up around us, right? Uh, so we've looked at uh, aggressively uh, providing the best, most cost-effective, efficient project, and we're, that's what we're going to present. So we did look at addition and renovations, and like the things I cited, a school that's out of compliance, uh, the issues with uh, the HVAC, 
uh, plumbing and, and additional issues that would need to be fixed through a renovation. Uh, once you once you start working on a project, you have to address every pro every issue that comes up. When you're talking about a building from 19, the 1960s, uh, a renovation to this school, uh, along with an addition, uh, is not as cost effective as a brand new build. So uh, that went into making a decision for our school building committee. Again, we had an entire committee scour over every single detail, every single dollar. We're not looking to present a school um, that is going to uh, purchase the high end of everything. We want a very cost effective school. So when we looked at all the numbers, the addition renovation was not as cost effective as a brand new school. And that's why we went into the, in, in that route. Um, in terms of in terms of numbers, uh, any idea on, on approximately how much a, a new diamond would cost, um, or is that still too early in the process? It is too early in the process, Keith. However, I can tell you a little bit about the process and early numbers that we're hearing. We want to be transparent throughout in this entire process. So today, we've identified uh, a uh, a place for the building. It'd be right on our 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 football field. It would not hamper or uh, diminish the learning process at all. So we could. Uh, you know, build right on the football field. The current school building would end up turning into the athletic fields. Uh, so that's being submitted to the state today. If it's approved, then we start designing the school proper, you know, the classrooms and vocational uh, areas. Uh, if that's approved in October, then next spring, spring 2022, we'll have a final number of uh, the reimbursement that the state is going to pay for and the implications for the taxpayer. Right now, that reimbursement is higher than most places I've ever heard of. If you if you research reimbursement SF, uh, MSBA, you're not going to hear a number like this. Uh, it's 69 percent that the state is willing to pay for. So that means they they would pay for 69 percent of the project, and then we would work it out with the towns. Again, spring 2022 is when we start the budget approval process or the financial implications uh, for our area communities. And how would that be split amongst the communities? Would Fall River see a larger share just because of the number of students? Would it be based on the number of students that that diamond attracts? I guess, how would that be sure. split among the communities? Yeah, until we have a real number, um, that I, I can't speak intelligently to that, but it, we do have a regional agreement with all our towns, uh, meaning based on the enrollment or the number of kids that they send to us. Uh, so I think that we'd be looking at our regional agreement um, along with the real numbers that the state will come down with us and, and really educate all of our communities on. But I, I believe it's going to be based on the regional agreement. Now, in terms of the new building as it's being proposed, um, are you looking to just sort of um, <clears throat> physically expand to accommodate what's currently at Diamond, or is there opportunities to uh, grow educational opportunities with the new building? Yeah, we are exploring uh, new uh, vocational shops too. We really want this to be the hub of the community, right? You can come here, you can grab lunch, you can get your car fixed, you can get your teeth cleaned all in one place. We're gonna be a hub for this community. So again, when I talk about expense versus in a, uh, an investment, this is an investment for our community. We're already supplying the next generation of workforce uh, in this current building that was made for 900 kids, shop spaces that are not adequate for the modern vocational education programs. So we're really looking at uh, adding to some of our programs to our existing 18. We're, we're looking at uh, program 19 and 20 to really explain, uh, expand the options for kids. We're also taking more kids. Like I said, we have 700 applications for 375 seats. The, the demand for Diamond is real and it's needed and there isn't a better time than now. I, I've, I've Learn that in these situations, when you have a reimbursement rate of close to 70%, you have to take advantage of it in that moment. These situations come, you know, once in a lifetime. So, you know, the awards, the accolades, the, the life-ready students that we're producing speak for themselves. But we're going to make sure we educate our community to ensure that even the slightest uptick will be an incredible investment for this community. Like I said, a vote for a new diamond is a vote for a better future in our four towns. So uh, let me ask you, I know it may still be a little preliminary in, in many ways, but in terms of, um, you know, you mentioned that um, I think the fall of next year will be a time when you start working out budgets and, and, and the economic impact of this. Um, is there any plans on, on, you know, when you would see even a ribbon be cut? To, to, that's sort of something people want to see, right? Um, I know for the new Durfee, there was that vision of, you know, fall of 2021, and we're just about here for that. Is there any uh, vision in terms of 
when the new diamond could be complete based on a, a schedule that you're hearing? Yeah, based on what we've already started since 2017, we're looking at about a five-year timeline, three to five years uh, from our two, uh, uh, from our because we started in 2017. From right now, about three to five years, probably closer to five years uh, for a project. But again, you know, I understand the implications when you hear that. Well, I don't have kids in the system. Why would I do that? Again, this is this is an investment for the town you live in. Uh, to create the next generation of workforce. So when you go to the plumber, it's still a diamond kid, uh, you know, or, or call a plumber or go to the auto body shop. It is going to be a diamond kid there for the next generation. Uh, and and we're, we're really looking at making a genera generational impact for our four towns. So yeah, about five years, Keith. And uh, I'm looking forward to following it every step of the way with you, uh, Andrew. So thank you for joining me again, Andrew Rubello, Assistant Superintendent and Principal at Diamond. We'll talk again soon and, and take care. Awesome, Keith. Thank you so much. And I'm Keith Sebo from FRC Media. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.